In the last couple of videos, I've been talking about Azure Virtual Desktop and Windows 365, two services that deliver pretty much the same thing to your end users. And since these two services are so similar, I thought it'd be cool to put them up head to head and see in which areas each of them excel and which one comes up with the best total score. Now, I know that which one is the best fit for you largely depends on your use case. So at the end of this video, I'll also go through some use cases and point out in which of these I think uh, which service is the best fit. And uh, I'll also be scoring Windows 365 Business and Windows 365 Enterprise uh, separately, since they are so different in terms of features, simplicity, and so on. And speaking of scoring, today's categories are features, complexity, flexibility, costs, security and compliance, and lastly, user experience. Sound good? Cool. Both Windows 365 and Azure Virtual Desktop are services that Microsoft is investing heavily in in terms of development. And because of that, there is a buttload of features in private preview, in public preview, soon to be in preview, and so on. And because of that, I will be focusing mostly on features that are in GA at the time of making this video for simplicity's sake. So, uh, so let's just jump right in shall we first up is features and even though all three of these in their essence deliver the same basic service azure virtual desktop and windows 365 has a lot more features than windows 365 business with windows 365 business you get a virtual pc that you can connect to and that's about it with windows 365 enterprise on the other hand you have a lot more features you have for example full mem integration which allows for custom images and every other feature that mem has which you're perhaps already using for all your other devices, but you also have an integration with Universal Print, you have Endpoint Analytics, and perhaps the coolest thing of all, you can connect your cloud PCs to your existing infrastructure, be it on-prem or in the cloud. AVD has everything that Windows 365 has, depending on how you configure it, but it also has two features that Windows 365 does not have, and that is Remote App, which allows you to stream applications instead of desktops, and it also has Multi-Session, which allows you to stack multiple users on the same virtual machine. So in round one, I would say that's a win for AVD. Next up is complexity, and here I'll consider how complex the service is in terms of management and setup. Now, a Lower level of complexity is preferable, but we all know that this is often tied to the number of features. The more the features, the more the complexity. And here, Windows 365 Business benefits from its lack of features. I mean, the service is super simple. You just purchase a license, you assign the license, and within a half an hour or so, your cloud PC is ready to use. Windows 365 Enterprise, on the other hand, is a bit more complex. As of now, it requires a traditional Active Directory that is in sync with Azure AD and you need to have hybrid joining enabled. You also need to provide your own Azure infrastructure that is connected to your existing traditional Active Directory and you need to have MEM. These requirements makes it a bit more complex to get started and the day-to-day -day management is a bit more work than it is with Windows 365 Business. AVD in this category is just about the same as Windows 365 Enterprise, but I would say it's a tad more complex just because the fact that the costs are a bit harder to manage since they are consumption-based and not license-based. Round 2 goes to Windows 365 Business. In this third round, we will be looking at flexibility, and all three of these deliver a pretty flexible solution, but in terms of flexibility, we also have to consider things like scaling and what you actually can use the service for. Windows 365 Business has the least amount of flexibility. I mean, the scaling is easy enough, you just purchase a new license and you assign it, but those licenses you have to get through the Microsoft 365 admin center you cannot get it from say csp which i would prefer but that may be just me windows 365 business also has really only one way of using it and that's a virtual desktop that has nothing but an internet connection and the apps you install on it with windows 365 enterprise you have more flexibility in terms of payment what you can use the service for and scaling the enterprise flavor allows for uh, purchasing and paying partly through your microsoft partner and it also allows you to scale your cloud pcs without having to provision a new one this way your users will not lose the data that's on their cloud pc when they're moving to a higher spec cloud pc and you also have some more flexibility in terms of what you can use the service for do you want just a simple desktop in the cloud fine do you want to use Windows 365 Enterprise to manage your and work with your on-prem stuff? Fine. Do you just want to use Windows 365 Enterprise to manage more lockdown environments in Azure, like a jump box? 
fine. But the most flexibility you get with AVD. You can do all the things that Windows 365 can, but you also have full flexibility in how you want to pay for the service. You can pay by a credit card, invoice, CSP subscriptions, uh, enterprise agreements, and you can also use reservations to cut down on costs for your virtual machines, or you can just power them on and off if you want to save on costs. And you also have more options on how you want to use it, aka more use cases. I would say that in round 3 it's a pretty clear victory for Azure Virtual Desktop. Now let's consider costs, and here I'll consider the total cost of ownership since Windows 365 Enterprise and AVD comes with a couple of requirements that also adds to the total cost. Windows 365 Business costs what the license costs, it's that simple. Assuming you have hybrid benefit and can use that, the license for a Windows 365 Business is the exact same cost as for a Windows 365 Enterprise license. And even without the hybrid benefit, it's only about $4 more. Windows 365 Enterprise adds bandwidth charges on top of your Windows 365 license, and you are also required to have licenses for Windows and for Intune. On top of this comes the costs of having a traditional Active Directory that you are required to have. AVD shares some of the costs that Windows 365 Enterprise does. You are required to have a traditional Active Directory, and you, your users need to have a Windows license. Apart from that, there's a one major difference between Windows 365 and AVD, and that is that Windows 365 is license-based and AVD is consumption-based. Depending on your usage and your setup, AVD might come out cheaper, but chances are that your cost with AVD will be a bit higher. This means that round 4 is a solid victory for Windows 365 business. The next category is one that is on top of a lot of companies' minds these days, and that is security and compliance. Now, I would argue that these three services are secure services that comply with most regulations out there, but it kind of depends on how you set it up. So in this category, I will consider each service on how they are out of the box. Windows 365 Business has a lot of security built in, like encryption of data at rest and in transit. You can also enroll your cloud PCs to Intune and configure additional security options through MEM, but they are not enrolled by default. You also lack control of where your cloud PCs be will be running. They will be running in an Azure data center, but you have no way of controlling where or even knowing as far as I know. Windows 365 Enterprise has the same built-in security features that Windows 365 Business has, but in addition to that, the cloud PCs will be enrolled to Intune by default, meaning that you will have a lot of configuration options and a lot of insights to your cloud PCs through MEM. With the Enterprise version, you also have some degree of control on where your cloud PCs will be running, as you have a list of compatible Azure regions to choose from, meaning that, for example, a European company can choose to have their cloud PCs running on European ground. AVD leaves a whole lot more up to you in terms of security and compliance. It is by no means an insecure service, it's just not a whole lot there right out of the box. You do have even more control over where your virtual machines will be running, but just that's just about the only advantages that it has over Windows 365 Enterprise in this category. So in terms of security and compliance, Windows 365 Enterprise is the winner! Final round is end user experience, and all three contestants deliver their service through the same channels, the remote desktop app or through an HTML5 compatible browser, and both Windows 365 Flavors deliver the same exact user experience, not much of a difference there. The only exception is that with Windows 365 Enterprise, you have an option to enable your users to upgrade the cloud PCs themselves. AVD has one major advantage here, and that is Remote App. Remote App allows for streaming applications to the end user device, and it does so in a pretty seamless way, at least if you're using the remote desktop application. Things like snapping things to the left side of the screen, having shortcuts on the start menu, things work exactly like a local application. And because of that, I will put AVD as the winner of the final round. Before we move on to the use cases, let's look at the scores. Windows 365 Business won two categories, complexity and cost. Windows 365 Enterprise won one round, and that is the security and compliance round. Now, AVD won three rounds, the flexibility, features, and the user experience. Now, does this mean that AVD is best for every use case, and that Windows 365 Enterprise is only good if you want security and compliance? Well, no. Each of these services excel at different kinds of use cases, and there are some use cases that uh, excludes some of the services, uh, because you just 
can't use them there. If all you want to provide your users with is a virtual PC running in the cloud that they can connect to from everywhere and on every device, then I would say Windows 365 Business is the best choice. Easy. If you want a VDI solution that you can use as jump boxes to a more lockdown environment, you cannot use Windows 365, but both AVD and Windows 365 Enterprise may be used in this use case. And maybe even Windows 365 Enterprise is better than AVD in this use case depending on your environment. If you want to provide your users with one or two applications from the cloud and at the same time use local resources on their local device, then remote app is a more suitable way of doing this than a virtual desktop. And neither flavors of Windows 365 allows for this, only AVD does. And if you're planning on any kind of GPU load, then AVD is the only option if you want to have GPUs on your virtual machines. So as you can see, each of these three are great services and what is best for you depends solely on your use case. Even though I really like AVD. Alright, that is it for now. Remember to hit that like button and consider subscribing if this is the kind of content you want to see more of. See ya!